Welcome to Sportsline, brought to you by Ace Hardware, New Kensington, AKLC Studios in Leechburg, Arnold Furniture, Fifth Avenue, Buffalo Bills, New Kensington, Fazio's Deli and Meats in Arnold, Highland Tire, Toronto and Natrona Heights, Matteo's Pizza and Subs, Brackenridge Heights, Resevich Family Funeral Homes, Lower Borough in Arnold, 380 Discount Warehouse, Murraysville, Tower Auto in Blonox, and Westmoreland Insurance Services of New Kensington. Everybody, welcome to Sportsline. Mike Pavlik here, George Guido there. George, we have no Bob tonight. Bob's taking the night off. No. He's prepping himself for the big month of April, I guess. And right. A well deserved. A well deserved. Off, Mike, what, what was that what you were going to say about yeah. that? No, I don't want to say Bob's old or anything, but he has so many personal days, vacation days, sick days coming. They've accumulated over the years that we might not see him for three years. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing you have to know about Bob is, he, he accumulated them all because he would never take he one. He never, no. He would uh, never take one. So uh, Bob's watching at home. So hi, Bob. And I think we might talk to Bob later. Yeah. Um, so tonight, uh, here we are. It's a Monday night. The tournament's in full swing. Pitt, uh, another unceremonious dumping from the tournament, which earned their coach a 10-year contract. 10-year contract. I still haven't figured that out yet. I, I don't understand what one has to do with the other, but it might have to do with the fact that Ben Howland was fired quickly after that. And here's another one today. Tubby Smith was fired at Minnesota. That game, Minnesota played UCLA in the first round of the tournament. Both coaches were fired. Both coaches are gone. So that, that took care of that. And then yeah. so much for Tubby and so much for Ben Howland. But um, I heard today a, a possibility that maybe USC across town might give Ben Howland a call and he might want to stick it back to UCLA. And it might be a nice hire for those guys. Yeah, because UCLA has always been there. Uh, USC has been the second fiddle to UCLA out there for mm -hmm. so long. But when you have a chance to recruit an area of about 10 million people in a 50 mile radius of your campus you better get some good players now they've always gotten them in football basketball's been uneven for southern cal for many been. years and if they would get somebody like a ben holland or even like a tubby smith they could turn that around real quick i, I will say tubby smith is the type of guy that you could see going to usc also so we'll see what happens with that? We have a bunch of stuff on the docket tonight. We have a full studio audience, which yeah. was nice. It's a crappy night out. It's still snow, and it'll never go away. I just checked the extended for the pirate opener next Monday. Snow showers in 43. Oh, that's lovely. Right. So um, that's uh, that's what we have. Let's get to the rules and regulations yes. right now, if we can do that. Uh, run through those. Um, tell you folks what you have to do to win. You can win a prize every other week, one per household. You can win a grand salami prize or the mystery profile only once each calendar month. That's you, Tony. You can try the mystery profile once a calendar month. We have that on the uh, docket there. Um, the time uh, limits are the same. Multiple choices, 15 seconds. The salami, you get 20 seconds. And the mystery profile goes clue by clue. First time callers, uh, two or more prizes with the correct answer. We'd like to welcome you aboard um, if you're a first time caller and a winner there. And of course, you can get the answers to many or all of these questions on Bob's website at doubledribblebob.com. And uh, other than that, George, I, I see we have some, oh, here we go. We have Bob's radio show. We want to do yeah, want to make sure we do that. that. Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. on WAVL 910 and at 7.30 on Saturday mornings on WGBN 11.50 a.m. Does that 11.50 a.m. ring a bell to you, George? Very much so. In <laughs> fact, they have the same phone number that WKPA had during the 1960s and 70s. Now, see, that's very funny because we were talking about old phone numbers before the show started, about the, the, old, the old Channel 3 phone numbers. Right. Back in the days of you and 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 a, and a guy named Steve, Steve Meter came, yeah. came up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's another one. Maybe maybe Steve's watching tonight. So we have a couple calls lined up. This should take our first break right now. We'll do that. Um, we'll come back. We have Tony up and, and another caller also, and we'll get to you guys. So hang in there. Sports line. There's our audience. They are full. They are ready to go. Um, and they wave. Look at that. And the Statue of Liberty took the night off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> strangely. I don't know what that's all about, but maybe we get into that later. So uh, we'll take our first time out of the evening uh, with callers and audience members coming up. Sportsline will be back right after this.
380 Auction and Discount Warehouse, Route 380 Murraysville. Automotive supplies, groceries, housewares, pet supplies. All at discount prices. Sofas, dining tables, recliners, dressers and desks, lamps and end tables. All at discount prices. Yard and landscaping supplies, special catalog orders, mattresses with full warranties. All at discount prices. School supplies, tools, paint, toiletries, model cars, toys. All at discount prices. Get to 380 Auction and Discount Warehouse today, Route 380 Murraysville. Why do Arnold Furniture's customers continue to come back year after year? Maybe it's the personal touch that the Miller family has provided since 1975. Maybe it's the prices that are consistently lower than the competition. Or how about the selection? Four floors of living room, dining room, recliners, bedding, accessories, and so much more. Plus free local delivery, free setup, and free removal of your old furniture guaranteed. The choice is obvious. Visit Arnold Furniture online at arnoldfurnitureinc.com or stop at it and see us today. AKLC Studios LLC is the place for your video and multimedia needs. Let AKLC Studios produce a unique television commercial for your business. At your location or in our studios, we're here to meet your needs. Ever want your own television show? Let us show you how. AKLC Studios LLC can even tape your special events and weddings. Whatever your multimedia need, call AKLC Studios LLC in Leechburg today. Professional quality at hometown prices. Don't forget to like us on Facebook. You know, almost anyone can bake a pizza, but the best pizza is made with the best quality ingredients. And that says it all about Matteo's Pizza. Freshness does make a difference, and that same great quality goes into their subs and sandwiches, too. Matteo's is located in Brackenridge Heights. Give them a call at 724-904-7312. And as always, ask about that Iron Man hoagie. You get that thing. And uh, if you can eat that in one sitting, then uh, you're a better man than I or woman. <laughs> trust me, because I can't do that anymore. All right, we have calls, George. Why don't we get to the lines and yeah, let's uh, do that. say hello to our first one. Good evening. You're first in the store, as Cope used to say. Hey, having a Costello. Yeah, that's going on, Tone. <laughs> uh, so Bob's off tonight, huh? Yeah, yeah. Bob has the Bob is taking one of his many days that he has. Yeah, I know. I mean, we know Bob's off, but, you know, I don't know if he must have went somewhere. Maybe to watch a hockey game or something. Who knows? I think, he, I think maybe he stayed home just so he could try to win trivia. Who's going to try to win? Bob is, maybe. I mean, oh, maybe oh, Bob, okay. Bob is going to call in and try to win trivia. Oh, okay. So Monday's opening day, huh? It is. It is. Why? April Fool's <laughs> Day. Now, isn't it ironic that the Pirates <laughs> open the no, season no, on it's, April it's Fool's it's Day? Apropos, it's perfect. April Fool's Day. Because that's what the Pirates do. They, make, they, make, uh, they, they, they want to fool you. And it looks like, to me, maybe the Steelers are following their suit. Well, I don't know. Uh, James Harrison's agent contacted the uh, Steelers earlier today it looks like uh other teams aren't exactly breaking down the door why, to why attract would james they? The harrison to the team up. so that's the problem see the rays were the, uh, the ravens were smart after they won that super bowl they got rid of all the older guys they did. well they kind of had to and then the guy that the steelers said what what what's that guy's name elvis uh, Doomerville. Yeah. Yeah. El Elvis has left the building as far as <laughs> Steelers were interested in him. Sure. But but as usual, uh, they let somebody else sign him. The so now we have another guy that can knock uh, uh, Ben down a hundred times. That's that's just beautiful. You know? And Tony, I mean, they, they got so much garbage on that team. It's you know we'll we'll never get back to really winning. I'm telling you because not, not, you know you can't keep Paul and all and. Casey, Hampton, and Clark. What the heck's Clark do? He waits till you catch the ball, then he tries to knock your head off. And then he gets That's all he does. And then he gets fined. Suspended. And he gets fined, not, not he gets only... penalized. You know, the Steelers are a joke now. I think Rooney said, hmm, look at the Pirates. 21 years. They don't put nothing on the field. They make all kind of money. We make more money than they do. We have more fans. We have a 35,000 waiting list for seats. What the heck? Let's sit back and make some big money. Don't put nothing out there. Speaking of, the, speaking of the Ravens and the Steelers, Tony, there's a legitimate chance that the first game of the season could be the Ravens at Pittsburgh on the opening Thursday night of the year because the Ravens are not going to be able to open at home like all the other teams have done after they've won the that Super new Bowl. tradition. Because, the, yeah, the, the tradition that goes back all the way to 2004 <laughs> that the uh -huh. NFL was trumpeting. But uh, they may actually, the Baltimore Orioles have stood up and said, no, we can't move the game because we – we're traveling in. The White Sox are right. traveling in. They can't play it in the daytime. You right. can't have both there at the same time. That would be Thursday night, September the 5th. The Pirates uh, are, are off 
There was no game in town that day. It could happen, and the Ravens figure, well, we're going to have to take our medicine that day anyway when we come to Pittsburgh in prime time. Might as well get it out of the way fast. So you yeah, keep an eye on that. The schedule's coming yeah. out, I think, on the 13th of April, and um, that, uh, there'll be advance word of that if it happens. Oh, okay. And they yeah, don't want to nice. uh, start on Wednesday like they did this past year. Uh, it is Yom Kippur. No, it's Rosh Hashanah. Uh, Rosh Hashanah, I'm sorry. Right, it's oh, Rosh Hashanah. Hashanah. But uh, they don't seem to have any problem with, um, with Christmas, Christmas and Christmas Eve. Eve so. yeah. I don't know. Let me tell you a real quick story, then we'll, we'll go to trivia, okay? Sure. Uh, somehow, uh, my boy lives out in Missouri, and they get uh, South Carolina games. And my grandson, which plays ball, plays all baseball, basketball, he plays everything, uh, he somehow he fell in love with South Carolina's baseball team. So guess what? Last weekend, they were playing Missouri, out in, out, out in Missouri. Mm -hmm. So my boy gets tickets, and they go to the game, and they had great seats. They were sitting by this couple. And the couple, they start talking, and they said that their son was was going to pitch today, you know. And uh, so they was watching the game, and uh, he threw like a 78-mile-an-hour changeup. And uh, my boy said, mm, that's pretty good. He said, well, you know what, my boy used to be a junk pitcher. That's all he threw. Then he had Tommy John surgery, <laughs> and my boy started laughing. <laughs> he says, what are you laughing about? He said, well, if my dad was sitting here, he said, don't worry. If nobody wants you, call the Pirates. <laughs> They'll take you. You had Tommy John surgery. And you know what this guy told my son? They're scouting him. Huh? They're scouting him, aren't they? This is what he told them. If the Pirates were the only team in the major leagues that wanted my son, I tell my son, after you graduate, <laughs> go look for your life's work. Get a job. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he, told. he said, that's ridiculous what they're doing to Pittsburgh. He said, you know what? Baseball should step in with stuff like that. He can't 21 years. But anyhow, he said after he had Tommy John surgery, he picked up uh, between nine to ten miles an hour on his fastball. I've heard about that. Yep. Yeah, he, he yeah. Probably so, the, yeah. the tendon, the ligament was probably weak to start in, with in the first yeah. place. And, that, and that's that's usually what happens. And you, and you so get I think one. if you have a good promising young pitcher today, you know, young kid, go get him caught Tommy John surgery. He'll pick up nine or ten miles yeah. an hour in his fastball. Yeah, do it quickly too. Do it early before uh, you know before while well, they're a <laughs> yeah. kid. Yeah, and he has a future with the Pirates. So turn him loose exactly. Yeah. So anyhow, they they took him down to the dugout after the game, and they they he got all kind of autographs and a shirt. And then uh, about a week later, they, they they sent him stuff in the mail. That's neat. But it was pretty nice. Very cool. Yeah, I'm very a fan cool. of South Carolina. I love the old ball coach. I'm a Spurrier guy. Oh, okay. So uh, right. yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully they'll be uh, they continue on. And that and, just dawned uh, on me. It was a Southeast Conference baseball game. It is right? now. Yeah. It is. It's yeah. like you forget about that with Missouri. And Charles Barkley talked about that on the tournament the other day about how the SEC was doing poorly when Missouri lost. And I'm going, oh, that's right. It's a yeah, good, it changes every year. <laughs> it's, it's hard to keep track of it. All right, Tony, you ready for All trivia? Right. And Tiger Woods is back on track. I'll tell you what, he looks really good, doesn't he? I, yeah, I, I, but, think, uh, uh, I think Lindsey Vaughn suits him well. He uh, did say the F word on the on the TV today. I missed it. I heard. I saw somebody mention it on the internet. Oh, and I, that was. And, and there was kids standing right behind him. Yeah, I heard Johnny Miller circled the Ouch. kid with the towel That's, straighter. that's yeah. the bad part of him. Yeah. So that's oh, that's well. no good. But okay. I, I I did happen to see Ricky Fowler gag up that par five and take a snowman. You know what's amazing? Two in the water. Just before that happened, they put up a thing on TV that 14 tournaments in a row. Later in the round, he took a double or triple bogey. Complaint, complaint, right complaint, after they complaint, put that up. Two in the water in a row. It yep. looked like tin cup yep. all over again. Right after they put it up on screen. Unbelievable. Well, it's going to be very interesting masters, perhaps, if Tiger is indeed back. He's going to have yep. a chance, and um, it's, it's a place he can win. And, and, oh, yeah. And you that's, know that's, that. That's, and I, I really think that, that when or if he does win another one, it's going to be there first. Yeah, that I, I, I think really so, think that, that course is designed for him, and, he, and he's been close. Even when he's not played well here the last yeah. few years, he's been very yeah. close. Yeah, there. you're right. So. You're right. So, all right, all right, Tony, let's go. Ahead. Let's have George do all this. All right, one. go ahead. Which number would you like, Tony? Uh, on the Grand Salami, number two. Number two. Okay, here we go. This is a football question. All right. Who was the first pro football player to rush for 1,000 yards in each of his first ten? NFL seasons. 20 seconds, Tony. Who was the first to run what? 1,000 yards. For each his of first his first 10, 10, 10 NFL seasons. Wow. First person to ever do it. Hmm. Uh, hmm. How about, uh, I don't think, Joe the Jet Perry. Hmm. You're in the wrong generation. It's actually not too long ago, Tony. Barry Sanders. Mm, Barry Sanders. Rushed for 1,000 yards each of his first 
10 NFL seasons. All right. But hey, good hearing from you, Tony. Hey, guys, have a great one. You too, Tony. Take care. Happy Easter Bye -bye. to you. Thank you. All right, good look at our audience right there. We do have another call. We, we might as well do that and grab the caller that's on the line there. Uh, next caller up. Good evening. Welcome to the show. Hello, man. Hey, what's going on? Overtime with Alexa. What's going on? I see Bobby Orr is 65 years old. I, I did notice that. I was very uh, surprised to see that Bobby Orr is actually 65 years yeah. old. <laughs> you don't think of him as being 65. Limo, could you do me a favor? Could you back away from your, from your phone just a little bit? You're distorting on me just a tad. Yeah, sure. Uh, that's that's beautiful. Thank you. All right. So what's going on? How Plexico does Philly... Plaxico Ferris lost his Florida driver's license. I saw that Plaxico um, did not pay some fines. Um, no. And uh, has lost his Florida driver's license. I don't know what that does up here, though. He's spending most of his time Plexico up in Pittsburgh now, so I, I suppose, anyway. And two new Penguin players. Yeah, yes, we're isn't that something? definitely get into that. Uh, they got Brendan Morrow yesterday um, for Joseph Morrow, the young defenseman and a draft pick. And today, if you all missed it, they picked up a, uh, a big, rugged defenseman, Douglas Murray, 6'4", 245, uh, to clear the front of the net. He's a penalty killer. Um, a little bit of toughness on that back line that I think they've been missing. A Hal Gill type player, which, you know, when they, when they, the year when they had Hal Gill and they made the, uh, won the Stanley mm -hmm. Cup, and uh, after that it said, boy, we, we need a Hal Gill type. Those, and Hal uh, Gill was playing for those, Montreal. Uh, so. Hot dogs from the hot dog guys. What's that, Don Limo? You must be eating a lot of the hot dogs. From well, the you can ask them guys. for sure yeah, they're uh, because they're here. They're going to be on a little bit later. That's good. They're great guys. They, they see are. Riley Bow Wow all the time. And they speak very highly of you, too. God bless them. Thank you. I sure can, sure can use it. That's it. So, and Bob Costas is 61 years old. Mm, how can that be? I don't He's know. still weeping over the result of the 1960 World Series. And he can have it. Yeah. We, we like the way that ended. We don't get much around yeah. here, so we take that one, George, that's for sure. Uh, did you uh, read in the paper about the Armstrong County uh, nine different players inductees in the Hall of Fame? Did you well, read that? They're going to have 11 this year. Okay, there's only nine in the picture. Oh, okay. Which, well, a couple which didn't a show up. Which Hagen... Tom Eminger, Lori Gamble, Doug Goodman, Dave Highfield from KDKA, yep. no? Clint Tolles, Randall Bouchard, Kevin Talmadge, and Dennis Yako. 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 He was a good one. He uh, went to school right across the street from us here in uh, Leechburg. Oh, how about that? Oh, how about that? Boy, Leechburg was a powerhouse no, in football on the back list, then. Though. Oh, they were. Yeah. I mean, they, no they Jews some, on the list. They had some good teams. <laughs> are they still going to, or at least, are they still going to be able to play football when they move on to the Heritage Conference? They're they, still, they're going to be a Heritage Conference uh, school in all sports. Okay. I, I told KDK8, I want Bob Tattern to do a savage funeral home. Who's quit using that bozo? Bob Tattern always did it and did it great. All right. He did a lot of spots, commercial spots for a lot of people in a great fan, uh, fashion. I know. I, I know. I go back with him with the KPA days. Now, now, what about the Phillies? How's that looking? Uh, too early to tell. I wouldn't, I wouldn't brag and say they're going to the World Series, though. I will say this. If anybody does fantasy baseball, Chase Utley. He looks, he looks like he's in terrific shape. The legs look good. Oh, you saw him. I saw him. Yeah. The legs. Are, the Pirates were throwing to first base. They said, it's Chase Sutley. What are you doing? They took off on the next pitch and stole easily. He looks great. He, and he's having he's a good terrific. spring swing in the bat. I, if he's healthy, that's a pick for you. And Ryan Howard, too, to help him. He played more in spring training than anybody I think I've ever seen. He played like every game. He wanted to play more and more and more. Mm -hmm. He's in good shape. So, all right, Limo, we got to get to your trivia here. We got another caller on the line. We want to get to. All right, I want multiple choice, multiple choice. no basketball Looks or like hockey. Starting toward the bottom there. Mike. All right, here we go. Multiple choice. It's a baseball question, Limo. I think you might have a chance. Here you go. What major leaguer has the most career home runs on opening day? That's a timely type question, wouldn't you say? I Willie Mays, so. Ken Griffey. Mark McGuire or Frank Robinson? That's Willie Mays, Ken Griffey Jr., Mark McGuire, or Frank Robinson? I'll take a wild guess and say Frank Robinson. Oh, Lim, that, that is wild enough. Correct. Wild and correct. 
Way to go, <laughs> Limo. Hey, look at that. You have your, see, you got your own cheering They're section, cheering for Limo you in man. the audience. They're on their feet. Oh, did really... you say that was right? You are right. Oh, okay. Now i got to do fact, my Harry Callis routine. In do fact, it. Frank, Ta uh, Frank Robinson hit a home run on opening day in 1975, the day he became the first African-American manager in Major League Baseball in those, history. In those hideous red uniforms. In a, yeah, in those you know, the uniforms look like a blood time ball. winning. There you go, Limo. Great job. Okay, okay. Se send us There's out. Oh, God, the deep right center field in this fall is our new listener. Uh, Tom Denham, his wife, beautiful Sue, and his son, the king of the tennis players, Josh. All right. Thank you. Tom, Sue, and Josh, welcome to the show. It's nice to have you. All right, now I got, I got to ask hey, the control room. Do we Mark, want to take yeah. the call now or do we want to take the break? Yeah, it's Mark. Uh, okay, let's take okay. the break. We'll ask Mark to hold on, and we'll get to him right after. He's only missing work, so he'll be okay yeah, with that. He's all. actually pretty happy with that. So let's take his time out here on Sportsline. We'll be back right after this. This is where you get the absolute freshest deli meats and cheeses, Fazio's Italian Deli in Arnold. At Fazio's, you're getting only the best and freshest selection. Fazio's has its own bakery and offers you fresh baked bread, rolls, pastries, and more. Pick up individual salads to go, Italian sausages, hoagies, custom-made sandwiches, even party trays for your next get-together. Freshness and quality every time at Fazio's Italian Deli, Leishman and Dre in Arnold. Max and his son made their way homeward bound when mischievous rain dropped down, down, down. Safety was threatened by every roguish drip. They slipped and slid. They couldn't get a grip. Then along came the Michelin Man, reminding them the right tire changes everything. Stop up to 31 feet shorter than a leading competitor with the new Michelin Defender tire, backed by a 90,000-mile warranty. Michelin, a better way forward. Available at Highland Tire under the bridge in Toronto and Freeport Road, Natrona Heights. Westmoreland Insurance Services isn't like your ordinary insurance agency. Not only can you get a variety of quotes from leading insurance companies, but you can purchase that protection through Westmoreland Insurance. Westmoreland provides a full range of coverage for all of your automobile needs. Westmoreland Insurance Services, putting your family's safety in their family's hands for almost 40 years. Give them a call, 724-337-3557. Where you buy your vehicle is just as important as what you buy. If you're in the market for a pre-owned vehicle, get all the professional help you'll need at Tower Auto Sales in Blonox. Their experienced sales staff is headed by Mike Fanto. Give them a call and just buy it at Tower Auto. Phone number is 412-828-6202. Tower Auto Sales. Just buy it. All right, we have Mark on the line from work, who we uh, appreciate his call and uh, stepping away from his uh, uh, tough day to give us a ring. So, Mark, good evening. Welcome to the show. Oh, good evening, fellas. Yeah, I, a layoff day for just today. So. Oh, so you're wow. home. Hey, is Bob there tonight? No, Bob, no. Is, Bob is taking, as, as George said, Bob is taking one of the hundreds of days that he has Oh, okay. I wasn't sure. I couldn't hear on the phone. I, I heard Limo Man was just on before yeah. me, right. I believe. Okay. And that's a tough act to follow, it Mark, is. but I know you can do it. Oh, okay. George is there, too, then. Right. Yeah. Okay. It's hard not to see you, Gus, since I don't have that's a computer. Exactly. But. Well, we appreciate your call. What do you got now, for us? Uh, what do you think about the UCLA firing Ben Holland? I thought it was kind of unfair, to be yeah. perfectly honest with you. The guy, the, let's put it this way. The guy made the Final Four three years in a row. He okay. won his conference this year. Right. He made the Final Four three years in a row. If you take all the other current coaches of the Pac-12 and add them together, they've been to the Final Four twice. Wow. And he, by himself, went three times in a row. And they've had some issues out there, and I really think – that the main culprit in all this is Bill Walton. Bill Walton's been very vocal. Yeah. Um, he's, and the funny part was he's been so against the style of basketball that they're playing there, saying that it was slow and boring. They led the Pac-12 in scoring this year. Yeah, that's what I mean. And you win it. I, I mean, I didn't fall. I don't follow it enough, you know, as much as I'd like to. But I mean, I'm just was surprised. I was watching, you know, the late night talk show with Bob Pompiani last night. And mm -hmm. He was talking about it, and they said maybe because he didn't get to the big dance enough in the past four or five years of the final four or something like that or well, they he was on the hot seat going into this year because they've had some problems with some kids yeah. they've had some problems with kids that he threw off the team some behavioral matters, behavioral yeah. issues and and what they wanted him to do was he, he was recruiting a lot like jamie was here at Pitt and bringing in his type of kid and playing his style of ball 
and, and it didn't win them a championship, so they wanted him to go out. Your UCLA used the name, bring in some more high-profile kids, which is what he did, but they were more difficult to control, and they became problems for him. With that Mohammed, who has all the talent in the world, and for example. And who didn't show up the other night yeah, in a game yeah. against Minnesota. Um, and he'll go. I mean, he's going oh, okay. to march right now. And So I don't know what they're going to do there. I don't know if they have somebody in mind that they want to bring out there. It's a great spot. No doubt about that. And, uh, but now, ben, do you ben think Jamie will stay 10 years at uh, Pitt then, even though he signed that contract now? Well, it's funny, because when we heard that the other yeah. night, my line always is he signed a 10-year contract, which means he'll be the coach next year. Next year for sure. Oh, uh, okay. And that's, After and that? You really don't know. I mean, I, I, I tend to believe him, because, I mean, he's not the type of guy that's going to throw a lot of smoke, Jamie Dixon. He's, he's a good, solid yeah. guy and a, and a good, solid coach, and his, and his record shows it. But, you know, they – the uh, success hasn't come in the tournament, yeah. and especially recently. So, now, how much did he sign for? Did they announce any money values? I, he's going to make over two million a year, what I heard, which is going to put him on par with what the other coaches make in the ACC. Oh, okay. Just... So, you know, they're, they're, you're not going to have to hold a tag day for him. He was making because a million I, eight already. Yeah, one of the guys in the show last night didn't think Pitt would have the money if if he would have left to pay a, you know, a good coach. But if he's making two million, they're shelling out something. For I don't know. What, yeah, that's that's I, kind of on par. I don't right? know what Paul Christ is making. But he had been the highest paid employee of the university, Jamie Dixon. Yeah. So I'm going to guess that hasn't changed. And that includes the chancellor. Okay. And most schools, the football a big fan of his. He is. Well, obviously, it's why he said, well, at least I'll say the one thing about Nordenberg that I will say is that he does like his sports. Yeah. And that, that does kind of help a little bit because they, things have been a lot worse at Pitt than they are now. Oh, trust my goodness, me. Yeah. Well, I just hope, well, then changing the subject, I hope the weather improves for the Pirates home opener. <laughs> yeah, we do too. <laughs> Somebody said they if you use, see or They're not allowed to use orange baseballs, right? <laughs> no, Charlie Finley would have liked that. I think he proposed yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, I still can't. I wish for TV, just same as when you, I mean, I love to watch golf, even though I can't golf for anything. <laughs> but when you, when the ball's going towards the cup hole, if they would, to me, make it like a fluorescent orange or bright, it would show up so much better on TV. I don't know. That's just me. Maybe they needed to do with Fox and use the globe ball. Like yeah. The globe ball. <laughs> well, like, well, like the arena football. I don't re I mean, I watched the big fiasco, but at least you could see the ball. They have that like weird line on it. Yeah. When it's spiraling, you could follow it on TV better. That's I don't know. That's true. And so, I have a high def set now and it still doesn't look, I mean, the regular football as good as it does with these colored balls. Right. So, so hey, I don't know. Well, I guess I took up enough of your time. Send I'm going to go for the multiple send, choice. Send in your suggestions, Mark. Maybe they might want to listen. Okay. <laughs> multiple choice. Go ahead, George. All right. Is that what you want, Mark? Yes, sir. Okay. Here is a multiple choice question for Mark. Who is the only player to average 20 points per game and 10 rebounds a game for four different NBA teams? 20 points a game, 10 rebounds a game, four different NFL, uh, NBA teams. Your choices are Shaquille O'Neal, Moses Malone, Wilt Chamberlain, or George McGinnis. How about George McGinnis? No, it's actually uh, Wilt Chamberlain. Wilt Chamberlain? Oh, I didn't Whoa. think he Did played it for, for four different, different uh, NFL teams. I'm sorry, Moses Malone. Uh, Moses Malone is what it was. Oh, I'm why sorry. Is Moses Malone? Yeah. And said that now my wife's going to be mad. That's what she was guessing. Oh, <laughs> see? That's okay. Well, I think you should let her guess from now yeah, on. Yeah, I know. I'm going to put her on the spot. The next <laughs> time. Okay, thank you guys. We'll hey, good hearing from you, Mark. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. Bye -bye. Always uh, do appreciate that call. Okay, we have a full audience, as you've all seen out there, so maybe we can get to someone, um, get to a questioner from out there if somebody wants to. Somebody wants it, Jim? Hey, guys. What's going hey. on? I want to first make a bold prediction. Please. I want to say the Pirates are going to make it to the playoffs. I don't want to be too bold in saying they're going to this. You're World not Series. going to go the Clint Hurdle route and say they're going to win 95. <laughs> you heard it here first. All right. Okay. Um, I, I, Mark, I, I, he was talking about Pitt basketball. I wasn't mm -hmm. sure if he was talking about ACC basketball, um, the style, the, the Big East yeah. toward ACC. Was he talking about that at all? I couldn't really hear. Yeah, he, he was talking about just the, the differences that they're going to have, you know, going down there and okay and what and then i had brought up what ben was what uh jamie dixon was making as far as the money goes that the, well his style of coaching though it's well what do you it, think i mean i I'm, I'm not necessarily one and i don't know what george thinks about this i'm not necessarily one that thinks that it's the that miami plays the way Pitt does and they won the league yeah. so you know I, I don't i don't know that um that you necessarily have to run and gun i think there's more run and gun in the acc obviously than there is in the big east yeah. Because um, if you are, you know, you watch Carolina and Duke, even when they don't have their best teams, the game is just so fast. 
Yeah. And, and Pitt just doesn't play that way. But then, you know, Pitt would want to control the tempo. They're going to want to squeeze the air out of the ball when they play. He's not, he's not going to change the way he plays. I, I, yeah. I think when they signed up for 10 years of him, they signed up for 10 for years 10 of what years you see. What we've been seeing. Do you think they can learn from Robert Morris University? We can all learn from Robert <laughs> yeah. Morris. They're playing tonight. They're playing Providence. That's right. They're playing Providence. In the NIT. They're, they're the, the only uh, local teams still playing, George. Dunkin' Donuts Arena. Oh, That's right. Yes. <laughs> and uh, when you guys were talking to hockey, I, I did like the trades they made. Yeah. Um, who do you think is going to go? That's a good question. I, I have always had this uh, thing about Paul Martin that now he's made himself tradable. I don't think they're going to trade him now. I don't think there's any reason to do that. He's actually doing pretty good this he's year. He's playing very well. I mean, yeah. I, but – the thing is that when you look into next year, they only have $10 million left of their cap. And they don't have – and, and, and a bunch of guys, Kunitz, Dupuy, Cook, Adams are all free agents. They need to sign some forwards. And I think when it comes to going into the offseason, that they may have to pair some of the money that they're paying their top defensemen. And a guy like Martin, like I said, has now made himself tradable. That might be something you could do in the offseason. Or – the amnesty buyout that they had with the new CBA, they hadn't used that on anybody yet. And if it turns out they don't get a deal they like, and somebody, you know, somebody told me, well, but you know, he, um, you know, you're, you're getting rid of him for nothing. And no, there's no such thing as that in a cap league. If you if you gain five million dollars of cap space, you got something back. So he, he's kind of what I'm thinking is the way it goes now. Dupre's the only one with an option left. So don't yeah, be surprised if he goes down for a little bit and then comes back. Right. You're always going to need him at some point. At some point, and they have nine defensemen on their roster right now. And I, and I, see, um, uh, I see Murray playing with Niskanen at the, with the third pair. Martin, uh, I, I, I think Martin with Latang and Orpik with, um, who am I missing? Orpik with Eaton. Eaton's another one. He may be the seventh guy. He may be number seven. Yeah. So yeah. you're going to have depth there. And, and, and the other thing you also got to remember is somebody else is going to get hurt. Yeah, and it's just I mean, the way it goes. You're going to need the game. you're going to need all these bodies. I I don't know if he's going to send somebody, you know, if he's going to send somebody away in a trade right now. But um, so uh, trivia, Jim, uh, multiple choice, want? multiple choice. Let's do it. What Yankee threw his first no hitter the night before his father had heart surgery? David Cohn, Andy Pettit, Dwight Gooden, Ramiro Mendoza. What do you guys think? Andy. Andy. Oh, the audience says Andy Pettit. The audience, he used his, he asked, used his Ask the Audience uh, lifeline. He said, Andy Pettit, I'm sorry, that is not correct. The answer is Dwight Gooden. Did that with the Yankees. They did, never did pitch a no-hitter oh, well, with the New okay. York Mets. Jim, thanks a lot. Thanks for coming. George is, yeah, I got George is, George is, is going to run. George has got to go do paper duty. So yeah. thanks, George. Thanks for coming. Uh, appreciate it's great being here. Having you here, and we'll see you again down on the road. So we'll take a quick time out here. We will uh, be back with more. Here on Sportsline on a Monday night, streaming live right after this. Since 1914, people in the local area have relied on the Rusevich family in deepest time of need. The Rusevich family is the oldest established name in the funeral profession in AK Valley. Its reputation and unquestionable service speaks for itself. Now the proud tradition of service continues with a fourth generation. The Rosevich family serves the AK Valley from two locations, 5th Avenue Arnold and Leechburg Road, Lower Burl. AKLC Studios LLC is the place for your video and multimedia needs. Let AKLC Studios produce a unique television commercial for your business. At your location or in our studios, we're here to meet your needs. Ever want your own television show? Let us show you how. AKLC Studios LLC can even tape your special events and weddings. Whatever your multimedia need, call AKLC Studios LLC in Leechburg today. Professional quality at hometown prices. Don't forget to like us on Facebook. Welcome to Buffalo Bills Roadhouse, the place for big appetites. Their great sandwich selection includes the Geronimo, piled high with generous portions of meat and fixings. Their barbecue ribs are the best in town. Half rack or full rack, they don't come better. Buffalo Bill's wings are everybody's favorite. Uniquely oven baked, not deep fried, and yet so crispy. Your choice of 13 flavored seasonings. Grab a bucket for the big game. Eat in or take out, credit cards accepted. Buffalo Bill's Roadhouse, Freeport Road, New Kensington, across from Felderelli Square. Most anyone can bake a pizza, but the best pizza is made with the best quality ingredients. And that says it all about Matteo's Pizza. New location, Brackenridge Heights. Freshness does make the difference. 
And the same great quality goes into their subs and sandwiches too. Matios and Brackenridge Heights, you can give them a call at 724-904-7312. And they are the sponsor of our mystery profile every Monday night. No one has done uh, the mystery profile yet tonight, but we have one on here. It is ready to go. So if anybody in our audience or anybody out there watching live streaming wants to give us a call, 724-236-043. We have an audience uh, participation about ready to go here. Chris is with us tonight. Chris, good evening. Um, I want to tell you, now, now, look, now look at your camera. I want to show the hat. There we go. We got the, uh, we got the Bob Tattern Sports World hat on there uh, that Chris has. So we wanted to make sure we got that in. All right, Chris, what do you got for us tonight? Okay, I just want to know what your take is uh, on the uh, fact that the uh, Penguins have done all these trades. They're doing so well right now. Do you think, do you think that it'll build us up better, or do you think we're going to end up in a happy medium? Or I would like to see us get a Stanley Cup. I think we're all in agreement there. I think we would all like to have a Stanley Cup. I, um, we, we had some of this talk about what the Pirates did or didn't do at the trading deadline last year. The Pirates did get some people. Some of the players on the team thought that they might have upset the chemistry a little bit. Uh, and, and you look at a team like the Baltimore Orioles, who were having a great year. They did nothing at the trading deadline. They're, everything stayed the same, and they moved on, and they made the playoffs. I, I think that... Ray Shiro doesn't do this stuff lightly. I have much more trust in a guy like that than I do in Neil Huntington uh, as far as upsetting any locker room, this or that. They bring in high character guys here. They bring in a guy, Brendan Morrow, who's been the captain of the Dallas Stars for years. His, his skills may have diminished a little bit, but uh, the leadership um, and, and, and any other thing you have to, you don't think that he called in James Neal and, and Matt Niskanen who have played with this guy for a long time and asked what they thought uh, his impact would be on the team. So I. I, I trust the moves completely. Sure, you give up a lot. You give up a promising young defense move. They've already drafted about 100 of them that are going to be coming up through the pipeline here to take that place. So I, I don't worry about that. They needed somebody on that second line that was going to do the dirty work for Malkin and Neal to free those guys up. And by the way, doesn't James Neal miss Evgeny Malkin? He's really, his scoring has gone down a little bit since he went out. So, but, so I, I'm good with that. And they just desperately needed a big, strong, tough defenseman. And I think that this will fill the bill. And I, I, I really think these guys will fit in just fine. And I, I don't worry about upsetting the apple cart as far as the, uh, as far as the chemistry goes. I, and I also don't mind, look, and, and we talked about this before the show too, you're going to be bringing back Malkin and Latang here pretty soon to play in the midst of a 12-game winning streak. They're not going to let those guys keep those guys on the bench until they lose. They're going to bring them back in and play because they're your better players. You, you make, Bobby Knight once said, the best time to make changes and to work on things is when you're winning, not when you're losing. Okay, another question. Uh, what about the uh, Robert Morris uh, University game? Do you think it's going to be another no better tonight as well as it was the other time? That's a good question. I, I don't know if any of you guys out there saw the game, but um, it was really no better. I saw the I saw bits and pieces of it as it was going on, and then I saw the end. But just the fact that you can get Kentucky into your home building, a sellout crowd that they, I mean they were lined up. That I saw the coach Andy Tool talking about it. He actually walked past the line of the students that were in line with the tickets, and nobody knew who he was. So. He, you know, he's, he's going to be a big man on campus now. He's only, what, 32 years old. Um, he's got a bright future ahead of him. But um, that's going to be a tough game going up to Providence. They're going to have, uh, they're going to have their work cut out for them. Let's put it this way. If, if they'd have played this game in December, like when most of these games were played, when Robert Morris would go on the road against Providence, um, nobody would probably give them much of a chance. So um, I, I think the, the beating Kentucky – um, was the, you know, is, is the crowning jewel for their season. And anything they can do after this is, is just going to be icing on the cake for them. They, uh, it's, uh, it's been a terrific story what they've been able to do. And as we said earlier, they're the only team left playing in the city of Pittsburgh right now. They're the, they've made it further than anyone else in the NIT. Okay. I'd like to go for my trivia. Please. All right. What do you want tonight, Chris? Sure. Of choice, if you will. I can't talk you into the mystery profile. Huh? Okay, we'll I do. Did it, I did it. The, you didn't like it, huh? No, no, I did it once before. I'm not eligible for the month. All right, we'll go back multiple for you. All right, Chris, here we go. Tonight we have a baseball question for you. Um, I'll see if you can pull this one off. We have had one winner I'll tonight. Try. Limo man. What pirate hit a walk-off homer to ice a Francisco Cordova, Ricardo Rincon combined no hitter? What pirate hit that home run that won that game for the Pirates and, and got them their last no hitter? It was in 1997. If I remember right, it was uh, Francisco Cordova. Let me, oh, let me give you your choices. Mark Smith, Kevin Young, Tony Womack, Sean Dunstan. Oh, Sean Dunstan? It is not Sean Dunstan. No, no, wait a minute. I was reading the thing. The answer is Mark Smith. Get the home run off of Doug Hudak. I believe it was in the 10th inning. A 10-inning combined no-hitter. Okay. Pirates won the game. Okay. 
It was a big night. There was a sellout crowd. It was probably fireworks night. And we know how all that goes. Um, but goes, uh, but goes actually win for a change and pull out, went off, and that was, uh, that, was that. So, again, 724-236-0430. Uh, if anybody out there in Cyberland wants to give us a call, we do have some open lines for you tonight. We have uh, other things on our, on our plate. If anybody else would like to take a shot and come up to the uh, microphone, uh, we, have an, uh, we, have an empty, uh, we have an empty crack here. Here we go. Here's Paul. Um, what's up tonight, Paul? How are you? It's good, it is good to see you. What do you got for us? Well, the Pittsburgh Pirates. We're about to enter another season. <laughs> well, it always brings about a laugh, doesn't it? Yeah. Over the last, you know, I remember your prediction. That's right. Jim said they're making the they're making the playoffs. Yeah. Well, over, there seems to be a pattern developing over the last three seasons, uh, where they have a real strong start, mm -hmm. and then after the All Star game, the All Star break, then they just go downhill. Right. If you were to give advice to the team, what would be the main thing they would probably need to get over that hump, to carry that win past the All-Star game? All right, now I'm gonna ask you a question before I sure. give you an answer. Do you think that the problems have been more physical or mental? Mental trumps physical all the Every time. time. Now, Every time. And, when, and, so, and, then when you're, and, then, and then when you're tired mentally, it affects your physical performance. It does. And I, I just think there was a whole lot of panic going on with those guys. Um, the, the pitchers, now, now I, can, I, I can find some physical issues with a guy like James McDonald. That was, you know, somebody was saying about the fact that, you know, he just, you know, his lower half, I like to call it the legs, he's just very skinny and he needed to build up his legs. Yep. Because we all know, a pitcher needs to, a pitcher to continue on needs to have strong legs and that's why they make these guys run. You look at Nolan Ryan, you don't think he ever got tired with those tree trunks that he had under him, Roger <laughs> Clemens, guys like that. But I, I do uh, think that it's mostly, it's mostly a mental issue. I think they've tried a lot of different tacks to try to, to, try to get at it. I, I, I think it comes down to relaxing. I think it comes down to relaxing and having fun playing the game. And when, when they got themselves up to, their, to, the, to the, high, the, the heights that they had gotten the last couple of years in first place, two years in a row, and last year, 16 games over 500, mm -hmm. it, it didn't look like they were having a whole lot of fun there after the, when they came back. It almost looked like everything was weighing on them. And, and I know Hurdle was preaching it, that, yeah. that, that you, really, you really want to try to go out there and have fun and play the game. And Chuck Tanner used to say it all the time. You play baseball. You don't work baseball. And, and, how, and however that you've got to do that to get them over that hump is, is what you're going to have to do. I, I think one of the things that's really going to help them is the addition of Jay Bell as the batting coach. And, and it doesn't have anything to do with anything mechanical or anything like that. It's, it's that his approach he's going to take is going to be so different than what Greg Ritchie took, which was had him in the batting cages at 11 o'clock in the morning, and they just hit, 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 and hit. And he wants to work more on their mental aspect of hitting. That when you, you know, that he wants to have all the mechanical stuff out of the way, and when game time comes, it's gonna, it, it, it is gonna be all, uh, you know, you're not gonna see anybody on the bench going like this, trying to work out their, no. It, it's, it's what's he trying to do, what am I trying to do, and, and trying to be ahead of the game mentally, mm -hmm. as, as far as what you're doing at the plate. So I'll be interested to see how that works out. On paper, the lineup looks like it could be decent. It really does, and, and I, I just worry about the starting rotation. They are basically now coming into a, a week to go, before uh, the start of the season, there are two starters short. Karsten's uh, unable to pitch again yesterday, um, and he's not going to be ready for the start of the season. They need two starting pitchers. They're going to have to pick between two young guys and, and, a, and a reclamation project and Jonathan Sanchez. I don't know how that's going to work. Um, they, there are a couple off days in April they are going to be able to get away with some of it. But, so I, I really think that most of it is mental. I think Clint Hurdle's got a big job ahead of him, and, and hopefully they'll be able to pull it off. But, First month's going to be very difficult for them. They have a very difficult schedule. There's the, the, start, the couple of starting pitchers that they're going to be banking on to come back. Liriano probably won't be ready until the 1st of May. Charlie Morton, I don't know, sometime maybe in that same vicinity. They're really going to have to try to hold water this first month. If they can get out of April at, at 500, and I think they have a chance to have a good season. Maybe even make the playoffs. Who knows? That would be great. All right, uh, trivia time. Sir, what would you like? I have a mystery profile left, and I have a uh, bunch of uh, multiple choice left. I will take the mystery profile. Awesome. Awesome. Need help? Need help? 
The studio audience is uh, able. To, then, of course, if he does win and you guys help, you guys will have to negotiate what your part of the uh, what your part of the deal is. All right, here we go. The mystery profile brought to you by Matteo's Pizza in Brackenridge Heights. Everybody knows it well and loves it. There you go, Brackenridge Heights. Um, and here we go. This is the one hundred dollar clue. I am in the Major League Baseball Hall of Fame and was the first St. Louis Browns pitcher to hit two home runs in one game. Hello. And the peanut gallery right here, I have no idea. Yeah. What a hell they are, crickets huh? right now. What a hell they are. <laughs> uh, I'm clueless. All right, so that's number one down by the board. I mean, to that question. <laughs> Qualifier there. <laughs> yes. I coached college football at Allegheny College in Meadville, Pennsylvania. Uh, no, no, I know. Wow. No, Do you? That's a hard one. No. Nope. Nothing. Nothing, Paul. I've got nothing. Okay, here's the $50 clue. Okay. He was known for his phrase, it's not the honor that you take with you, but the heritage you leave behind. I know that one. It's a little I don't know. I know that one. It's Tony Gay. Is there another clue after this? Oh, yes. Then I don't know this one. Okay. $25 clue. I signed baseball's oh. first African-American player in 1947. Jackie Roberts. No, no, no. no, no that's who the player was. Signed him. He's being played by Harrison Ford. In being played by Harrison Ford in a movie <laughs> I have to Does see. Does that help me any? Uh, the guy that Harrison Ford is playing in the movie. Uh, that's not going to be enough. I'm sorry. Okay, let me give you the tinker toy. I think you might be able to get it. My first name is Branch. Branch Dick. Branch Ricky. Branch what? Ricky. Branch Ricky. Branch Ricky is correct. <laughs> we Thank have a winner on a final clue. <laughs> That's a good one. Good job, Paul. You will win, the, you will win a small prize as determined by the boss whenever he deems necessary. Oh, great. So we will, uh, we will let you know. Branch Ricky, yes. Great movie. I believe it's called uh, 42, um, is. which was Jackie Robinson's number. It's coming out here very soon. Um, and Harrison Ford is playing Branch Ricky in that movie. And I can't wait to see it. I, I am much looking forward to that. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Mike. Can I get back to the audience here? I have a question. I'm, I'm not, I'm not yes, let's do that. Let's, let's take the time out. Uh, Bob is actually on the phone. So we'll have a chance to talk to him for a minute, and I can ask him where he came up with that question. But I'm going to do to him what he's done to so many callers over the years in the, um, in the AK Valley. Bob, if you'll just hold on, we'll get you after the break. Okay? Let's take a time out right now, and we'll be uh, right back to wrap things up here on Sportsline right after this. Varna, Taming the Wild. Westmoreland Insurance Services isn't like your ordinary insurance agency. Not only can you get a variety of quotes from leading insurance companies, but you can purchase that protection through Westmoreland Insurance. Accidents happen. Are you prepared? You can be with a wide range of homeowners insurance options from Westmoreland Insurance Services. Putting your family's safety in their family's hands for almost 40 years. Give them a call, 724-337-3557. My first book on sports is available not only through the internet, but at various local businesses in the AK Valley. It's Bob Tattern's Sports Minutes. Short sports stories, odd and unusual, fascinating and funny, only take about a minute to read. Go online to doubletriplebob.com where links are provided for Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Word Association to get book information. Get your copy locally at Costello Printing in Tarentum, Blackburn's in Tarentum, Myrna's Brewery Outlet in New Kensington, or the Hot Dog Guys Lower Borough. Where you buy your vehicle is just important, just as important as what you buy if you're in the market for a pre-owned vehicle. Get all the professional help you'll need at Tower Auto Sales and Blonox. Their experienced sales staff is headed by Mike Fanto, and you can give him a call at 412-828-6202. Tower Auto, just buy it. All right, we have Paul in the studio audience. We've, I think we've just about gotten through everyone tonight, which is good. <laughs> Bob's on the phone. He's, he's 
graciously allowed you to come in here first, Paul. Right. Paul can't do trivia tonight. You've already had a win last week. Right. So you are ineligible, dude. <laughs> All right, so what do you got for us? Okay, I was wondering, in high school football this year, is there any anniversaries or milestones that will be taking place this year? or? That's a good question. Yeah. We needed Georgie here for that one. He's yeah. usually better at those than I right. am. Uh, like any anniversaries or not to <laughs> – I don't know. I uh, – I haven't, I haven't turned my attention quite to high school football yet. We we're just yeah. kind of putting basketball away. And one more thing in the high school football. Um, sure. Other than Riverview, what other teams play on Sat their home games Saturday afternoon? Wow. There it were, used to be Springdale. It used uh, to be Barrow, a lot. It used to be Deer Rural. Lakes. It used to be Knock. It used to be yeah. Richland when it was just Richland. Um, I think uh, – Summit Academy still does daytime out there in Freeport – or in uh, Butler. Right. Um, and Shady Side Academy down there in Fox, Fox Chapel, yeah. they right. do have lights too. They kind of switch off. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I think there might be it might be Western Beaver is right. one I of think them. They do, yeah. There are some A schools in the Beaver Valley that still do it. Right. But uh, for the most part, and Riverview sometimes gets temporary lights, and they'll have a night right. game or two um, yeah. at Riverside Park. But uh, those days are really gone. Yeah. I remember, you know, when yeah. I was in school, Burl still played yeah. all the time. Yeah, but uh, those days have really, uh, those days have really, gone, right. they've really gone away from us. Right. We've lost, uh, we've lost a lot of that tradition. It's, right. it's really become Friday Night Lights. I, I don't know. Did uh, how about up here? Did uh, I remember Leechburg was at night for? Yeah, they were night. Yes. For, for for a while, but I remember knock in the daytime. Oh yeah, very well. Um, and and Richland and, okay. and schools like that. But those are okay. uh, those are the long those are the long forgotten days of the '60s. I think those are those <laughs> yeah. are gone. And, the night, the nighttime's taken over. It is Friday night lights right. now. Yeah, that's all I had. I just wanted to uh, all right, Paul. Ask about that and have a good day. Hey, thanks for coming okay. out. Uh, we appreciate everybody's participation in the audience tonight, especially uh, tonight. All right, let's go to the lines. Uh, Bob is uh, standing by. Bob Bob couldn't stand. He wanted to take a night off, but he had to call in to see how everything was going. Bob, good evening. Yes, good evening, Michael. How are you? Uh, Bob, I'm doing great. The, the, the most uh, question is, how are you doing? <laughs> Not bad. You know, you said I was standing by. I'm kind of laying by. Uh huh. But um, I wanted the, the hot dog guys to know that I did not do that a mystery profile with them in mind. <laughs> um, and I've got to say, there's another. And I wonder if they're going to do this in the movie because Branch Rickey uh, had a chapter of his life played out in World War One, and. I was just, I grabbed my book, but I, I, I just can't get my, I can't hold the phone and go through it with the, uh -huh. other, with the other hand. But Mike, he, he had a, um, I can't reach un, uh, Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. He had, uh, he carried out with, a, with another a soldier or two, uh, an unauthorized raid <laughs> on the enemy. There was one particular guy that they were after. And they plotted this thing where they infiltrated this guy's quarters. And the thing went awry, and as Ricky was leaving, he grabbed an ashtray off the desk of this so-called war criminal. Years later, he is running the Brooklyn Dodgers organization. There's a knock on the door, the secretary says, I hate to bother you, Mr. Ricky, but there's a man here from the, and she names the Army. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he wants his ashtray. <laughs> <laughs> he wants his ashtray. But, I, you know, you, you mentioned this movie, 42. I, obviously, Harrison Ford was a great choice. I don't know who else they would have made for it. But the older Ricky, I just wonder, uh, I don't know how far they're going to take that up. But uh, Well, Her Harrison Ford's getting up there himself nowadays, too. I oh, mean, that's, uh, true. that's I, the, true. Last time I saw him, uh, you know, they were talking about they're making more Star Wars movies. Um, those were the, George Lucas finally sold the uh, yeah. sold the uh, sold the franchise business. So they're going to uh, they're, they're going to they're going to redo some of them. And uh, there was talk about him coming back. And, and, and somebody I know said, my God, he's so old. I don't think we can do this anymore. <laughs> you know, but. He's, he's, he should be, I think he's going to be a great choice for Ricky, and I, I don't go to the movies anymore. I, I just would rather just not bother him to that point, but I do want to go see this one. This is, should be a great movie. By the way, the, the one reason that I did call to congratulate you 
And, of course, people like uh, Glenn Mills and the other guy oh. who put together that Cager Classic again. Uh, I can remember, uh, I guess the last time I was involved was about a, a dozen years ago. And, Mike, it is such a great, great affair. Congratulations. Uh, you ought to tell the folks when this thing is going to be on the air. Well, they can actually, uh, um, they're not allowed to flip, they're not allowed to watch it until we're done. So, <laughs> oh. watch it live streaming because it's on right now. So they, they. Oh, Michael, I'm sorry. But but if you, if you can watch, <laughs> but if you can watch us right now on your computer and watch that on channel 190 right now, go ahead and do that. You're that's, doing okay. That's fine. But uh, yeah, uh, Tracy Edwards and Glenn Mills and Bill Heasley and Carrie Cordes, and I'm going to leave somebody out and and everybody that does such a great job over there. And it is uh, it is quite an undertaking. Um, what they do, and, and, and for the folks that have never really had a chance to come over and see it, next year, um, you know, make a mental note that, that you want to come watch. And, and it's a great way to celebrate the end of the basketball season. And, Bob, not only do you get, and, and as I said, we've been involved with all 17 of these in a combination from starting back when they, you know, be, began this back in, the, back in the 90s. But not only do you get all of these players, boys and girls both, from all the local schools, but it's it's like a it's like a gathering of all the great uh, basketball minds of the valley and the WPIAL because everybody's coach comes to watch their 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 player Absolutely. play and yeah. parents and and people that you don't see all year that you might see once a year are, are there for the game and um and and once again having to uh, if if you don't get there early enough as Saturday night was the case um, about the second half of the girls game and the first half of the boys game there weren't enough seats for everybody. Oh boy, and and it gets awful warm <laughs> in that gym. But it, but it, it, Bob, it's a great time. It always is. And yeah. uh, some food for thought, though, Mike. Sure. Think about this: the very first Cager Classic, the kids that played this past weekend were about a year away from being born. It's it's you amazing, know? isn't well, that something? We, I, I mentioned that to Glenn about how we're going to end up with second generation Cager Classic kids. Uh, and not in the not too distant future, and not only that, I've had, and this is an idea, and I, I know you'd like this. I had three different people come up to me on Saturday night, asking if it wouldn't be a good idea to, to have an alumni game. Ooh, that makes it longer. <laughs> people that people that had played in the game to come back, and oh, that would be fantastic. And and you know, it's like it is. That some of them, you know, some of them are going to be dragging crutches around soon. It's like the, the age is going to no, start catching you're... up with them. But I mean, I mean, you know, the oldest ones would be in their thirties about now. But you know, we would worry that they might actually take it too serious. We we might have a problem with that. But that you know, just just different ways to to do things. You know, to, well, even to... if they were just acknowledged at center court. And then somebody else mentioned that, and we and I had brought that up to to some of the organizers about that. That it wouldn't be a bad idea. Maybe when you get up to year twenty. That uh, that might not be a bad Absolutely. idea. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. I mean, but but there were so many. I mean, there were so many things that go on in and around at the skills competition on a Friday night, the uh, you know, and 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 all of that, and and they have the practice on the Thursday, and and what they've done now too is that they've moved it to a little bit later in the in the on the calendar, so that it doesn't interfere with the state playoffs. And, and this way, everybody right. can participate. And even if you play a state playoff game on a Friday night, kids have done that and come back from Hershey and played in the Cajun on Saturday. That's amazing. So, Michael, I have my eye on the clock. I know. So, I, you're, I, I figured you, you did. <laughs> Thanks, I want to thank you for filling in, it's number okay. one. And for George as well. The yes. check's in the mail. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Thanks. All right. Have a good weekend. All right, Bob. You have too. We'll, week. we'll, we'll talk to you. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. There's Bob checking in from home. Bob, uh, Bob had a little back issue yesterday, truth be told. So uh, he, 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 he really thought he could make it. He was going to do it. And... And a little convincing, probably said, you know what, we can handle this. Take the night off, rest up, and we'll be back as good as new next week. And uh, I'm sure he will. We've got to wrap things up. I want to thank everybody in the audience that helped. Everybody in the back, thank you. All of our callers out there, as always, we have applause. You've got to love it. Um, Billy Joe, Bill, everybody in the back, thank you um, for helping us out. So that will wrap it up. Uh, next Monday, right back here on April Fool's Night Streaming. And if you can't do that, remember Thursday night you can watch it on Channel 190. That's it. I'm Mike Pavlik. Good night, everybody. Thank you for watching Sportsline, brought to you by Ace Hardware, New Kensington, AKLC Studios in Leechburg, Arnold Furniture, Fifth Avenue, Buffalo Bills, New Kensington, 
Fazio's Deli and Meats in Arnold, Highland Tire, Toretto and Natrona Heights, Matthew's Pizza and Subs, Brackenridge Heights, Resevich Family Funeral Homes, Lower Burl in Arnold, 380 Discount Warehouse, Murraysville, Tower Auto in Blonox, and Westmoreland Insurance Services of New Kensington. Thank you.